Good afternoon, church family and friends. Welcome back again to the pastor's desk on a overcast Tuesday afternoon. Uh, I wanted to share a devotion with you today that the Lord's kind of brought me to as I've been researching His Word and just uh, in study. Uh, but first, I want to thank everybody for joining us online for last week's uh, Sunday morning service. A tremendous response, a lot of views on YouTube, and uh, great encouraging comments. And uh, we're working to make it an even better uh, product and more quality for you next time. As we notice some of the words were washed out, and maybe we can zoom in with the camera a little bit. And we're working on the sound mix as well. But um, thank you so much for tuning in. And I uh, would encourage you to head over to our YouTube page. Our church has one. And, and uh, go ahead and subscribe and hit the bell in the corner so that you are up to date and notified when we upload again. Uh, but uh, keep those comments coming. Thanks for everybody who has um, volunteered online to uh, be, a, be a help to those who might be in need today and offering your services. That was just awesome to see. And I miss you. I miss every one of you. And I can't wait to uh, get back together again. I believe this is temporary, but for the time being, I want you to know that uh, you're not very ever very far from my thoughts and prayers. And so I appreciate your prayers as well. Thanks for being so positive towards your pastor and staff. And uh, keep us in prayer as we try to do our best to do what's uh, what we believe is right and what's what we believe is safe for the time being and uh, just pray for wisdom I'd appreciate that big thank you to all the doctors and nurses and those of our congregation especially who are in any kind of health care uh, health health care field um, you guys are on the front line thanks to our uh, police officers and, and firefighters as well and everybody else all the truck drivers and those who are trying to keep us going I uh, appreciate it I know for a fact that uh, from our healthcare workers that um, the beds are full everywhere in every facility and uh, thousands of tests are being done every day to find out uh, who may or may not be uh, contagious or who may, may or may not have the virus. And so I know you're all overworked, uh, underappreciated, but uh, not for this church. I want you to know that you are greatly appreciated. So keep up the good work and uh, may God give you the strength and courage and energy that you need. Uh, to do your job well and to meet the needs of the people as you are bringing the kingdom uh, into the lives of those that you touch. And so we appreciate all that you do. I'm looking today at a couple of different scriptures. Isaiah chapter 43, uh, reading at verse 1. And I just, pray, I just pray that these would be an encouragement to you today. But now this is what the Lord says. He who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you or called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. And you know, God actually commands us not to worry, not to fear, the phrase fear not is actually in the Bible over 80 times, most likely because God knew that the enemy would want to use a tool like fear to decrease our hope and limit our victories. And you know, I've been a Christian for a long time now, and it's never I've never been able to wrap my mind around the fact that this God who is the creator of everything, creator of the universe, sovereign over all, the God who is never caught by surprise, the one who has no equal this God, the creator of the universe, actually cares deeply about our intimate needs, our everyday things, little or big. God cares. It's just, it's mind-blowing to think about that. He, he desires an intimate relationship with you and me. And today from his word, he is reminding us, even in these times, do not be afraid. And I believe that by focusing on him, uh, our natural focus begins to shift from fear to faith. It's kind of like if I had a, a telescope or something that magnifies today, uh, that zooms in. It's amazing. The more that we focus in on God and His love for us and His protection of us, and we zoom in on that, the less that we see around us. Everything around us on the, on the sides begins to fade. And so we need to be zooming in today on God's love and His protection and care for each and every one of us. And in doing so, that will increase our faith and it will reduce the amount of fear that we have. Even though we are preparing, even though there are pressures, and there's, there's seemingly panic all around us. As even just yesterday, I was with a group of, 
of guys from the church. We finished up a service project, and on the project we were told, as you know, uh, that every gymnasium and every restaurant and all these other places are closing down at 3 p.m. So we got in there at 1 o'clock to get kind of our last meal in before these things took effect. And and it was a ghost town. And as we drove past the, the different grocery stores, they were packed still. Uh, so I'm in the same boat you are. I'm no different. Looking for that toilet paper and paper towels and other produce and meats that seem to be flying off the shelves. And, and in, in the midst of all that, I'm reminded even today through the Word to to not focus on all of the things going on around me, although I need to be aware and prepared, but to zoom in on the love of God. And in the process of that, the things on the sides, the things around me begin to blur, and they begin to fade a little bit. And the love of God begins to increase my faith and reduce my fear in the midst of this time. And so I want to encourage you with that word. Uh, but also I want to take you to 1 John chapter 4, verse 18 where the Bible tells us that perfect love casts out all fear. And I began to wonder, as I read that years ago, how in the world does love cast out fear? And I think the answer is really pretty simple. You see, God is love. and God is perfect love. And the more that we focus on God's love, the less we remember or we focus on fear. I remember when I was a young, young boy, I've shared this with some of you before, and I was outside and playing uh, catch with a frisbee with my dad. And uh, inevitably, of course, I threw a terrible uh, thrill with the frisbee and it landed on top of our house roof. Now, one thing you need to know about me is I'm deathly afraid of heights. I hate climbing high. I hate being high uh, on top of roofs or in high positions. And I, I, don't, I don't even like going to Cedar Point, although I go with teenagers or with whoever else is with me. And they, they'll tell you that if you do get me on a ride, uh, I somehow transform into a two-year-old and begin to scream at the top of my lungs. But usually you find me uh, sampling the, the latest elephant ear or somewhere in the arcade. But I just hate heights. And so my dad said, well, son, uh, since you're you know smaller than I am, uh, I'm going to lift you up on my shoulders and I'll put you up on the roof. I need you to grab that Frisbee. And I remember not wanting to show any sign of weakness or to... So I had my dad think that I was some big wimp. And so I said, sure thing, Dad. And I climbed up on his shoulders. He hoisted me up there. And he pushed me up with his arms until I was able to wrap my arm around the gutters and climb up on the, on the uh, roof. And adrenaline kind of kicked in. And so I, no problem, I, I, uh, you know, my, my feet grabbed the hold of the shingles. I felt safe. I reached down and grabbed the Frisbee and tossed it off of the roof to my dad. And in, in that moment of doing so, I realized I'm still on the roof and he's on the ground. I have to get down somehow. And my dad would tell me, uh, son, if you just jump off, I'll catch you. And I said, I don't know, dad, is there a, maybe a ladder someplace in the shed or some other way for me to get down? He said, no, son, really. If you jump, I promise you, I will catch you. And hearing that from my dad and, and seeing that intent look in his eye, I knew I would be okay. And so I took that jump off of the, the roof and he did in fact, catch me, and I was safe in his arms. I have to believe that this verse, that perfect love casts out fear, is very similar to that story, in that the Lord who is our Heavenly Father, the same Father who would move heaven and earth to keep us safe, in this time of anxiousness and worry and anxiety and fear, I think that what we need to do is to jump into our Father's arms, because I knew that if I was, if my dad said he would catch me, he would, and I would be safe in that moment. And our Heavenly Father today is, it's the same way. His perfect love will cast out any fear that we have today. And it might sound a little cheesy or corny, but I, I would just encourage us all today to jump into our good, good Father's arms. He is safe. He's faithful. He is always good. And as we do that, we focus more on the love of God that He has for us. You see, we are His prized possession. We are the apple of His eye. He loves you and me, this world, more than anything else. And He desires for us to make that leap. He will catch us. You see, the same God who was faithful to you and I way before anybody had ever even heard of this virus is the same God who's faithful to us today in the midst of all that we're going through. And He will be faithful with us tomorrow. We can rest assured on that. So tonight when we lay our head on our pillows and maybe our heart is heavy 
and maybe we're not really sure of what's going to happen. And the unknown is pretty scary at times. You and I can close our eyes with peace and comfort knowing that God has everything under control, including, by the way, our spiritual destination. We know where we're going. And uh, God's got a great plan. He has a mansion waiting for us. And uh, I want to encourage you today not to give in to fear, but do the things as we kind of have time now, don't we? Do the things that will increase our faith. Be in the Word of God. And I want to also just give you a word of caution today. Um, why don't we use social media and the news outlets uh, for information only to keep us up to date on what's happening? You see, I, I, I'd hate for us to be going on to those social media sites and the news sites for comfort and peace. We're not going to find it there. Why don't we, as a family, as believers, as a church, why don't we go to God's Word today and find out what God says and how the comfort that He brings to us? Because the Bible says that He will provide for you and me a peace that the world knows nothing of. As a matter of fact, I'll go one step further. I don't even think that you and I, as believers, sometimes understand this great peace. Because the Bible says it's a peace that passes all understanding. It makes sense to us in the moment, but we really can't explain it, and we can't wrap our, our minds around why or how God delivers peace in the midst of these storms that we're in today. But He does it through the Holy Spirit's help and power. He is so faithful and so good. I want to encourage you with that today, and I'll make sure to check in with you very soon. And as we prepare for our service on Sunday, I'm working to get some Sunday school material out to those from the book of Revelation that will be interested in knowing a little bit more. Uh, but again, I'm praying for you. I miss every single one of you. Would you continue to pray for me and the leadership and one another as we move forward? Uh, don't hesitate to reach out. If you want to uh, plan a, an appointment or make an appointment with me to come and talk or, or for any kind of counseling at all, I am available to you. And uh, I'm looking forward to getting together again very soon. Uh, so use this time uh, to reconnect with family, maybe reconnect with friends. All the things that we have been saying for months Boy, if I just had time, I wish I could do this or that. Now is the time. So continue to be a positive light and encouragement to one another. And in this time, we need that more than anything. And, and above all else, let's put God first. And uh, hang on to that love. As God commands us not to fear, let's be obedient and zoom in on His great love. And in doing so, once again, everything around us begins to blur and fade. And let's leap into our Father's arms. And I believe His great love will surround us. You know, we'll cast out all fear and anxiety during this time of life. And so uh, God is good. Until next time, until we meet, meet again and, and, or we are together again. Uh, I look forward to talking to you soon. God bless you.